This is Business Week Armenia, Civilnet's weekly economic digest. Here's what you need to know this week. Gevork Papoyan, a former lawmaker from Armenia's ruling civil contract party and a close ally to Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan, will lead the country's economy, replacing Bahan Kerobyan, who was dismissed and detained on charges of abuse of power last month. Papoyan was formally appointed Armenia's new economy minister this week, taking charge of the agency in the aftermath of a sprawling corruption investigation that brought down Karobyan and a number of other officials, as well as one of Armenia's most prominent entrepreneurs. Karobyan was dismissed, indicted, and placed under house arrest last month alongside four of his subordinates and three current and former executives at the tech firm Synergy, after Armenia's intelligence and investigative authorities probed alleged mishandling of public procurements. Other individuals embroiled in the investigation include Ashot Hovanes, Synergy's high-profile founder, and Ani Gevorkyan, a former Synergy executive and the sister-in-law of Parliament Speaker Alen Simonyan. They have all rejected the charges against them. For its part, an organization representing more than 120 firms in Armenia's burgeoning tech sector has warned the case harms the reputation of Armenia, which is beginning to be seen as a country that violates due process and a risky country for making investments and starting businesses. Prior to his appointment last month, Papoyan served as the head of Parliament's Finance and Budget Committee. Before joining civil contract in 2018, he was a member of the Republican Party, Armenia's former ruling party. Papoyan takes on his new role at a time of surging growth in the country. Armenia's economy expanded by 8.7% last year and 12.6% the year prior, according to official figures, fueled by massive inflows of capital and labor from Russia and a vibrant re-export business. Trade between Yerevan and Moscow topped $7 billion last year, an all-time record. Armenia's government formally designated five areas within tech as high priority in its new Science and Technology Development Strategy published this week. They are Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning, Microelectronics, Advanced Robotics, Quantum Technology, and Biotechnology. Presenting the strategy this week at the country's inaugural Science and Technology Development Council, Pashinyan acknowledged Armenia has many obstacles on its path to development, while insisting one of the primary tools to overcome these obstacles is science in the tech sector. The council, which brings together officials lawmakers and leading tech entrepreneurs is set to meet regularly to review progress on the government's new priority areas. Armenia's tech sector has long been seen as the country's most dynamic and promising industry and now employs more than 30,000 people, including thousands of Russians who have moved to the country since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine two years ago. Turnover in Armenia's tech sector reached nearly $1.6 billion last year, representing about 7% of the country's total gross domestic product. In related news, Armenia's parliament this week began debating new regulations for the country's tech sector, which has long benefited from tax breaks, state support, and other forms of preferential treatment. The text of the new bill has not yet been made public. You can also check out our latest video report on the small business owners who were forcibly displaced from their homes in Nagorno-Karabakh last year and are now rebuilding their lives and their livelihoods in Armenia. This week, we sat down with 23-year-old Alina Balasanyan, who now hopes to start an organic poultry farm in northern Armenia. Here's some of what Alina had to say. Ես չեմ ասում տանանաստան ինչ որ աջակցություն ինձ բեր են տան կամ չգիտեմ մի փոքր հիմք որ լինի փոքր օգնեն հաստատ ես ոդքի կանգնեմ ու որ ոդքի կանգնեմ հաստատ կփորձեմ իմ նման մարդկանցել ես օգնեմ իրենք ինչ որ չափա ոդքի կանգնեն The full dispatch is up now on our website and YouTube channel and as always, please follow CivilNet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground here in Armenia. 